Hey everybody, it's Paul from Screenwriting Mentor. Today with a, a first impressions video of Scrit. Um, you can find Scrit at this following uh, web address right here, Scrit at IO. Now the interesting thing about Scrit is you can find it for Windows, Mac, as well as Linux. So that's pretty cool. Now at the time of this particular video, it is still free, though they are thinking of instituting a charge pretty soon. This is a pretty powerful program. One that, as we begin to look at it, uh, I think you might really enjoy, depending on what your writing needs are. So let's take a look at just real briefly uh, before we get into uh, the actual program itself to see sort of what it's, it's asking for. As we can see here, we're seeing a lot of sort of pre-work, which is something that I really have enjoyed as a screenwriter. It's sort of laying my work out. I'm not one that's very... Um, I'm trying to think of the right word <laughs> as a screenwriter. It's pretty bad if you can't think of the right word. Spontaneous. I'm not very spontaneous. I like to map everything out. And from my first initial impressions as we go through this, I think this is really good at laying stuff out. You can see it's focused on structure. They have index cards. You know how much I love index cards. You never lose sight of the big picture, which is something I really uh, find helpful. It's uh, The other one big thing with this is it has a lot of industry standard, standard formatting. It also has multiple Indian languages. I don't think you can do it in Spanish right now. However, if you're one of my Indian subscribers, this program might be something exactly what you need. The next thing I really like about this program is that you have a visual map of relationships, which I think is pretty nice. You can capture a lot of notes, generate reports, the other thing I really like here is they have a library of screenplays. They don't have very many as of right now. I think they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think they have eight. If I remember, if I looked at, if I think I briefly looked at this today before I got started, and I think they have eight, but they uh, allow you to download and read screenplays, which I think is, is awesome. You can uh, import and export popular formats. Uh, with the uh, fountain, there's a caveat to fountain if you, you do your stuff in fountain in that you'll have to go through, well, with any of them, you really have to go through and just make sure that the formatting is right. When I was looking at this, I've noticed that some of, some of my fountain stuff does not come over very well. And so you really need to be, if you're writing in fountain at all and if you're going to use script, uh, just be mindful of that though the final draft stuff we'll take a look here i'll drop a final draft uh, formatted screenplay into the program and we'll see how it does with the formatting all right so that sort of gives you a basic little outline of script let's take a look at the program itself so when we open it up this is sort of what we get now i haven't done a title page so we can edit a title page and we can Add so it has a nice little thing here uh, that you can add into there. Nothing really too hard. Pretty pretty easy. Uh, I'm not going to write anything as of right now. So let's take a look at some of the other buttons up here. This is obviously new. You can open a previous uh, script uh, screenplay. Saving always important. Save as very important. Uh, scriptly. So let's take a look at this real quick. This is an interesting feature. This is where we have those screenplays that we can take a look at. Um, and let's maybe make sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, there's eight right now. Um, and so you can actually open them up and look at these screenplays. You can actually have them pulled into the document and you can look at them. Another interesting thing on this is you can actually have templates. So you can create templates. And here, if you're, especially if you're the save the fan, uh, save the fan, save the cat uh, template to use. They also have uh, four acts, 40 scenes. Also the hero's journey. So some pretty typical uh, formats here. Let's take a look at very briefly at save the cat structure. And as you can see here, um, they have uh, a nice little article about it. Just a very brief article about that. Uh, the interesting thing when you pull up this template you're going to sort of be able to you'll be able to put it in the save the cat format and if you know if you're familiar with that uh, this is done exactly like that you can get everything framed like this 
So you start with, if you remember, save the cat, you have an opening scene, you have a setup, you have a catalyst. And, I mean, you have a, a bunch of different things that are, are, are known for uh, save the cat type of format. And I'll cover that in a different video. So I think those are, so that's some more information about that. We won't go that there right now. Uh, this is how you import or export and reports. We have a setting page. Now, when you first boot up the program, you're gonna see this here, which is gonna be shortcuts. And so if you are a big shortcut person, I'm not, I tend not to shortcut so much. I like to just use the, the stuff. I either right click or I a left click up at the top. But if you're a shortcut type of person, this one has all your shortcuts here that you need to, to do. Uh, so that's nice in the way, and again, you can just close that, but if you need to find it again, just simply go to settings and click on shortcuts. Let's see our next button. Uh, I should say, just let's go through the settings real quick uh, as well too. Um, so the interesting thing here, when I was looking at the screenplay editor, you need to click the spell check. I thought that would be an auto click, but make sure your spell check is clicked. <laughs> and you might, want to check, so this one's smooth scrolling. Um, you can see that this option will, will um, make scrolling the screenplay editor a lot smoother, but it can, can take up a lot of RAM and cause freezing. So I think I'm gonna keep that one off. We have different fonts that you can use, uh, trans alliteration, uh, relationship graph. I think none of this other stuff we don't have to worry about too much. Again, you have page setup, formatting rules, structure, that type of stuff for this document. You can sort of see with the three act structure. Well, it looks like um, you have sort of the save the cat type of structure if we want to use that. So that's sort of the setting. And up here, we have a couple of, of generate a PDF out, uh, output, uh, search and replace panel uh, for your script screenplay editor. Screenplay editor options. Again, we can take a look at these. So if you don't want to have the ruler, if you don't want an empty title card, I mean, you can, it's pretty customizable. So nothing that I want to do there. So we're getting close to some of the, the big features of this. Um, so with this button, you can create an episode break. You can create an act break or you can create a new scene. So here's something that's very different about Script. So if you're used to using Final Draft or Kit Scenarist or any other basic type of screenwriting software, most of them are designed around sort of a page uh, format, meaning that you look at your page of dialogue. Well, let, let me just pull up an example from Final Draft. Okay, so here's sort of the difference between script and something like Final Draft. As you can see here, Final Draft, basically you see everything on the page. So you have a page and that's sort of what you work off of. So you're, 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 you're looking at the screenplay from the concept of a page. Now, to, let's contrast that with what's going on with Script. Script, on the other hand, you can see here is, is seen centric, meaning that we look at each scene individually and see how things work. And so that's a, that's a good and a bad thing depending on what your workflow is, is like. Now, the interesting thing about script is you will be able to see which page number you're on. Now, there are a couple of different ways to do that. And there's some interesting things here uh, that I wanna point out. So one here represents which page number you're on. You can see that down here as well too. And also the interesting thing too is you can see how many seconds uh, this particular scene takes. So that I think is pretty a cool idea. Now, sometimes this does uh, on older computers or basically probably any computer, if it, can, it slows down your computer. If, if it's slowing down your computer, simply click this button here and that will allow you, that will take that away. But if at any time you wanna see what page number you're on, boom, there you go. Now to basically to do any type of typing within the editor, you're just basically gonna type right in the editor, extrinsic space. Hey, there we go. So then you can add different characters. You can add a synopsis of your scene here as well too. You know, what is going on with your scene. 
click here to, to and here are your different buttons. So you're gonna start with an action scene, you know, action. Uh, we'll just write something really uh, easy. So right now it's, it's still sort of active in the action type of, let me go through here and say that's my hero. Um, and then, so that's, so it automatically defaults to what you've been using. So I've been using action. So now if I want to create a character, I just write hero and then it automatically will, and the nice thing about this, look up here, it automatically sticks your character up here. And then we do a dialogue. And then again, you can add another character. You can keep doing dialogue. So as you can see, we're in the dialogue tree. And then after that, if you have a parenthetical, so if he's going to sit down, you simply can just click this here. Um, to a fighter jet. Um, and then it goes back to parentheticals, or you can switch that to action. Um, so it's pretty easy to, to use as an editor. And then over here is a transition. So if you want to cut to, dissolve to, fade in, fade out, that type of thing. All right, so that sort of shows us what the editor is. And that we're reminded that we're in the editor by using and looking at this particular icon. Now the place where script really shines is these next two buttons, the structure button as well as the notebook. Let's take a look at the notebook first. So here's the interesting thing about the notebook. It's basically just that. You can, it has a, one, a lot of wonderful different features. You can start off with the characters and so you can add a character. Uh, we'll start with hero. You can look at relationships that this person would have. So if there's a bunch of different other people in there, you can, you can have some relationship maps to that, which I think is really neat. You can have for your, so this will, this button here will get you back to the screenplay. This one contains story notes. So if you want to add a note, just simply click on that. You can add a text note. You can change the color that you like or a form note. Uh, or a protagonist character treatment or story structure template or a checklist note. So you can, so it's got a lot of power when it comes to sort of brainstorming your story, which I think is pretty neat. All right, so let's make a new story note because I think it's important to, so you can see the different features. So if you have a different story note, here's some, here's some powerful things. You can add attachments. So you can add like Word documents. You can add like links to outside websites. You can add movies. I mean, you could add whatever you want for the story element. So I think, I think that's one of the most powerful things. And like I said, you have a certain color for that. So you can add uh, more notes if you, if you uh, so desire. You can add another text note. You can make that one green. And again, you can add whatever you would like to that as well too. So I think that's really neat. It sort of reminds me of Scrivener uh, in that Scrivener had this wonderful research type of feel to it where you can add whatever you want to help with your story writing. And I think this is one powerful thing about Scrit. Um, just in my initial assessment, of, I think that's really neat how you can just write a story note uh, about all that as well too. Um, you can toggle on bookmarks, so, you, so that would be like the first note you would see and, and stuff like that. So I think, like I said, it's, it seems really powerful, especially from a creative way. If, if you're one who likes to plot out everything, I think Script has a, a very powerful part just in looking at the uh, notebook. Now, this is where it gets a little cooler. So let's go to structure. So. This is sort of like a, a way that you can look if you if you've ever done video editing before. This is sort of that video editing piece. So you have your timeline, like what you would do f to create a video. Then you would have that sort of initial idea here, and this is where you would add more detail. So the neat thing about this is you can actually create a huge beat board, as I had shown you previously about Save the Cat. You can you can put out a ton of these different cards or beats, however you want to group them, and you can group them in different ways. And I, th and I find this really interesting that you can do all this. I mean, you, as, you, as we just 
just sort of mouse over the different tools here. Again, you can use the beatboard layout. You can sort of see how the how this particular works. We can add another. Let's see how I add another. Add a scene. Add a new scene. Boom. We add another new scene there. We can add another new scene. Boom. Here. Now you're probably wondering, but Paul, that looks so cluttered. We can do a beatboard layout, and we can see that they're not cluttered anymore, right? And if, let's say, we just want to work on the structure, we can actually pull by just clicking and dragging there. Now, these other two unused scenes, we can, we can tag with, we can, we can um, bring them in with the other act one. So I, let's see if we can do this, how easy it is to do this. So if we click this, and then we grouping options, acts, let's see if we can see how easy this is to do. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we do this, and this, and so that so what that basically did was I threw the scenes down here. Now the interesting thing as we look is we can see from here we can see that this scene is going to this scene here. But let's say let's switch those around. Let's take and let's see here. If I can just oh so let me just move them. Oh, okay. So pretty easy. Um, ah, we got it all into Act 1. There you go. We're just using this guy down here. So let's try. I'm going to try, I'm going to say, second scene. And we're going to see if we can move these two scenes around. Let's go to this one here. Let's do third scene. And see if we can just move these two scenes around. Let's see how easy it is to do that. Okay, let's see if third scene. There we go. So it's really easy to sort of move around. If we want to bring back that editing scene here, we can edit the scenes that we want to do. And again, we have our layout, so they're all sort of paired together uh, and stuff like that. So as you can see, especially if you're doing working with a non-linear story, or if you're working with several different character or story arcs throughout a screenplay, you can see how much more easy it is to see on the page what this all looks like. So I would have you take a look at, especially if you are looking at making a very nonlinear screenplay or you're looking at a screenplay that could be very difficult to sort of figure out the A, B, C, D type of action, or if you have like A, C, Z, Y action, this is probably a good way to look at that. So let's take a look at loading in one of my previous, um, let me look at loading in one of my previous screenplays. Let's take a look. All right, so I brought in one of my endless pages scripts right now. The way I did that is I, you can't use the open because that only opens script. You need to use the import export. And so uh, right now I'm taking a look at my Endless pages, which is basically where I just write a little bit about anything I want to write, write about every day. Let's take a look in the structure window and see how that all looks. And you can sort of see how the story sort of maps out the way it does right now. And then I can go anywhere along the line here, and you can see what number of page we're on. If we move to here, you can see we're on page 40 of 69. You can see that this whole thing of 69 pages lasts about an hour and eight minutes. And then I can just move down here and click on any sort of thing I want. And as you can see here, like I said, it's very much a butterfly effect. Let's take a look and see if I can see anything about it in the notebook. Oh, interesting. So I can see all the scenes here in the notebook feature and let's see here it doesn't have synopsis okay so it does and the synopsis it does have 
let's see if it's got okay it's got those things now if I wonder if I go to okay so the other thing I can look at here is the relationships if I have any relationships any notes I have any comments I have I can look at all those things there and then if I go to and it pulls me right up to that particular note in the screenplay file so I think that's pretty interesting and like I said the the cool thing about this structure thing is if I want to move one of my scenes back I can easily move my scenes back and forth I can look at my scenes from a 21,000 perspective I can change the way that my so you can see that everything's sort of on a beat board everything's all on one level as opposed to before it was all up and down now I can see it's all left to right and each one is I can change all the colors if I want to change it so it really makes it pretty easy to move around change different story structures look at your story from a, a 3,000 uh, mile high perspective which I think is really pretty neat so that's sort of my initial impressions of script it's really good at helping you with the story structure the editor itself is pretty basic it's helpful the other thing that you're going to need to understand when you use this particular program is that it's not based on pages though you can see the pages again you're at page 67 but it's built on scenes creating scenes adding scenes it's it's the that small the smallest sort of unit that you're going to be working with is not a page it's going to be a scene and so that's its strength as well as its weakness and I think, like I said, if you're really much about turning and looking at your scenes and creating a story from a sense of scenes, this is all also really good at just sort of pre-planning your story out. You can see all these different things here, these different templates, the, temp the different templates that they have, the different structure and notebook. It's really good about pre-working. So if, some, if you are looking for pre-work, I would definitely go with Script. It's a good program. And right now it's free, so, so give it a try and see how it works. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this particular video. In the upcoming weeks, I'm gonna have some more detailed videos on how to use Script and its powerful structure and notebook sections of its program. So stick around for those. Hey, if you're new to the channel, my name is Paul from Screenwriting Mentor. I help you write screenplays. I look at screenwriting software. I also help you by looking at movies and helping breaking them down, helping you with all aspects of screenwriting. So if this is the content you would like, please feel free to subscribe to my channel below. If you have any questions about screenwriting software, different elements of screenwriting, please hit me up as well too. Until the next video, live well and write well.